Hello, folks. Today we're going to look at drift. Drift is temperature induced offset when you get right down to it. So we've already talked about DC offset. That's an undesired DC level at the output of the op amp. Even if we manually null the amplifier, as temperature shifts, the internal balance of the uh, op amp circuitry also shifts and we get a new offset and this new offset we refer to as drift. So what I'm going to look at here is magnitude of that new temperature induced offset, just the drift itself. In other words, the value that we get assumes a couple of things. It assumes that we, that we still have that R offset value that we talked about. It also assumes that the amplifier has been nulled. If the amplifier hasn't been nulled, then the value that we're going to calculate is added on top of the prior value of, of DC offset. So here's what we're looking at. If we were to plot either the, the VOS, VIO, or IOS, IIO, versus temperature, we're going to get a curve. You know, maybe something like this. Okay, I'll just throw this out here randomly. So the the shape that is. Um, so what I'm saying is this value is a function of temperature, and we've maybe you know zeroed it out for this particular temperature. But if I operate this at a new temperature, there's you know new value for VOS and a new value for IOS, and that, like I said, is going to produce some kind of um, uh, new additional output offset. So manufacturer will tell us what the worst case slope for this curve is, right? I can find this on a data sheet. I look for two things. I look for an item called Delta VOS Delta T, which might be shown up as Delta VIO Delta T. And I look at uh, something called Delta IOS Delta T. And again, that might show up as Delta IIO Delta T. But this is the maximum rate of change of offset voltage with respect to temperature. And this is the maximum rate of, of change of uh, input offset current with, with respect to temperature. So they give this to us. And we'll have units that will be, you know, ultimately, you know, volts per centigrade degree, amps per centigrade degree. Now, if we take our original equation, our original offset equation, you know, and again, this assumes that we had the R offset value in there and everything was nicely balanced with resistance. And we basically had an equation that looked like this. A noise times VOS plus IOS times RF. Well, we basically, in our new equation, our, our output drift, We replace the VOS and IOS terms with these temperature dependent terms and what our change in temperature is. In other words, what our delta T is. Where did I null this thing? Or where did I do the initial measurement? And where is it now? What's the new temperature? So we can write it like this. It's delta, VO, uh, delta VOS, delta T, remember that's one number, times the actual delta T times VO, uh, excuse me, times uh, AN, ah, times your noise gain. And then the IOS, same sort of deal, it's delta IOS delta T times your delta T times the RF. So sometimes people ask me, well, don't these delta T's cancel out? Yeah, they do. I mean, the, the units will, but remember, this is one number you get on the data sheet as is this and then the delta t is what we calculate over here on our sort of environmental scenario if you will okay all right so as an example suppose i have an amplifier um let's let's uh let's use a um, a non-inverting amplifier like yay Yay! So I'm going to throw in a 2K and an 8K over here. 
Now, a lot of the things we said about offset initially, you know, they remain true over here. Um, there is such a thing as an input referred drift, just like there was an input referred offset, and you do it the same way. So there's a lot of similarities. But in any case, um, so let's say I, I have this amplifier. Okay, I've, I've nulled it at some temperature. And what I want to do is move this to a new temperature and discover just how much extra offset, this temperature-induced offset drift that we get out of here. So the first thing I would want to do, of course, is make sure that I have an appropriate balance of resistance. In other words, I want to make sure that I have an appropriate R offset in here. So the R offset value, because my source is back here. That might, of course, be a DC source from a sensor or something, but I'm just going to draw a little AC source. Um, that's got to equal the RI in parallel with RF, or 2K in parallel with 8K. 16 divided by, or, uh, 16 divided by 10, so that's 1.6K. Uh, that's what I need over there. Now, if my source impedance was kind of high, like if I had a 600 ohm source impedance, then I'd only need a, an additional K ohm in there. And don't worry about this producing any kind of voltage drop, because remember the Z end of the op amp is huge, humongoidal. Okay, so that's where we begin essentially, and you know we would hopefully manually null this thing. And let's say that um, you know our our start temperature is 25 degrees centigrade, which is kind of a warm room temperature. So we're going to say it's nulled at 25 degrees centigrade. Now what I want to do is find out how bad is this drift at a new temperature, right? So the, our target temperature will make that 75 degrees centigrade, right? Kind of like what I'm drawing over here, new higher temperature. I look up on a data sheet. And what I find is our uh, delta VOS delta T is 8 microvolts per centigrade degree. And our delta IOS delta T is equal to 1 nanoamp per centigrade degree. Typically, these are, you know, orders of magnitude smaller than the VOS and the the iOS values, right? Because ideally this thing would be perfectly flat, but we're going to need a little curve. Okay, so what do I have in, in terms of uh, noise gain? Well, the noise gain and the signal gain for this circuit are the same because it's a, um, a non-inverting amplifier, right? So that would be right, a signal is a noise is 1 plus RF over RI. So that's RF is 8K, RI is 2K, that's 5. So our output drift our delta VOS delta T is 8 microvolts per centigrade degree times delta T. Now our delta T we're going from 25 to 75. So delta T is just that difference, or 50 centigrade degrees. So multiply that 50 centigrade degrees, then multiply by the gain of 5. Then we add in the delta IOS, delta T, 1 nanoamp per centigrade degree times the 50 centigrade degrees times the RF value, which is 8K. All righty. Now, plug these things in. So the 8 micro uh, times the 50 times the 5, or 8 times 250, that's, go that's going to get us uh, 2 millivolts. And then the other piece, 
All right, the one nano times the 50 times the eight. Let's see, that's 400 micro. So we add those together and the out drift. Again, it's always a range from a negative 2.4 millivolts up to a positive 2.4 millivolts, right? That's the envelope that we have of temperature-induced drift, temperature-induced offset, DC offset at the output. If I was interested in finding the input referred drift, we find that the same way we did with the offset. So take that output drift, divide it by the signal gain. Again, the signal gain in this case is the same as noise gain of five. So you take your 2.4 millivolts and you would divide that by five, right? Your signal gain. All right, so that would give us uh, 0.48 millivolts, 480 uh, microvolts. Bingo, right? Again, smaller is better. So if you uh, find that's insufficient, you're going to have to go out and start looking for a better op amp. Um, of course, better, I mean, you got two terms to look at. You might try to redesign this. It might be possible to reduce your resistor values. Maybe not. You know, in this case, you know, imagine what would happen if you had larger resistors, like if you had an 80K and a 20K. Well, with an 80K over here, this would jump to four, um, uh, four millivolts instead of 400 microvolts. And you wind up with six out here instead of 2.4, right? So, you know, back to that idea of, hey, these resistors can be too big. But you probably wouldn't want to drop this a lot more. I mean, you certainly wouldn't want to drop it to like 200 ohms and uh, 800 ohms. You know, you'd have a thousand ohms out here for a load. So you're going to have to be dumping that much extra current down here. And how much of an improvement would you have gotten? You know, by dropping those by a factor of 10, this would have gone to 400 to 40, which is great, but, you know, the delta VOS, delta T is the, is the dominant element here. So you'd have gone from 2.4 to just a little over two. Well, that's an improvement, but it's not a huge improvement. You know, if you were gonna look around for a new device, look for one that has a better, um, you know, delta VOS, delta T in this particular circuit. That's really important. Now, some bifet op amps, the delta IOS delta T is so small because they have a JFET, you know, front end over here, FET front end. So the currents are really tiny. They won't even list this because it'll be, you know, like a fraction of a pico amp per centigrade degree. And it's so small that, you know, for any practical circuit, you just don't even worry about it. All right. Okay. So there we are. So offsets and drift kind of tied together. It's a very similar equation. We really just change the VOS and the IOS into the temperature uh, dependent version of it, the slope, multiply it by the delta T and off we go. Okay. All righty. See you next time.